Hello, Roar Mithril here once again, continuing the analytical portion of the Silent Hill 4 project. Last time we talked about basic monsters, but now it's time to get into the main meat of things. It's time to discuss the victims of the 21 sacraments. Not all of them actually appear in the game, but we'll go ahead and cover all 21 victims. So let's get this started. So first off, we have the 10 Hearts Murders, Walter's first 10 victims who all had their hearts removed as part of the ritual. Victim 1, Jimmy Stone, a.k.a. the first zombie in Resident Evil. Seriously, am I the only one that sees more than a passing resemblance? Jimmy was a priest in the Order's Valtiel sect. Known as the Red Devil due to a hood he wore, and in a desperate attempt to make that newspaper article in Silent Hill 2 work for the purposes of Walter's role in this game, Jimmy was the first of Walter's murders, and he was shot in the back of the head. It's also notable that Jimmy is the ghost that kills Joseph Schreiber in the intro, and also tries to get into room 302 as a haunting. It kind of makes me wonder if pinning him with a sword makes that haunting not occur. <coughs> Victim 2, Bobby Randolph, a.k.a. Sir Not Appearing in This Film. Bobby is the first of the victims that does not actually show up as a victim ghost, at least not that we see in the game. Friends with Sean Martin and Jasper Geen, the three were interested in the tales and lore surrounding the Order. As the three went to find a devil, Bobby encountered Walter, at which point he was strangled to death. <coughs> Victim 3, Sean Martin, a.k.a. the other guy. Sean was killed basically right after Bobby, and in the same way, strangled to death. And just like Bobby, he doesn't appear in the game. After killing Bobby and Sean, Walter called out to Jasper, beckoning him to come meet the devil the trio had sought. However, the screams of his dying friends were enough to make him run. Jasper fled back to town, thinking he was safe, and he was, at least for a while. <coughs> Victim 4, Steve Garland, a.k.a. Bubba. Steve was the owner of a pet shop, the same one seen in Building World. As a child, Walter was startled by a dog there, something that evidently left an emotional scar. When Walter returned later to make Steve part of the 21 Sacraments, he killed him with a machine gun, taking care not to hit him in the chest so he could remove his heart later. Nice aim. Just to put a cap on the evening, he decided to shoot all the pets in the store as well. <coughs> Victim 5. Rick Albert, a.k.a. Anonymous Sports Guy. Also missing from the game, Rick Albert lives on through the name of one of the shops in Building World, specifically the Sporting Goods Store. Rick's murder immediately followed Steve's. While searching the storeroom for a missing volleyball, someone ran in, breathlessly telling him about the murder in the pet shop. Rick wondered how the man knew so many details about it. This moment of clarity would do him no good, though, as Walter bludgeoned him with a golf club. <coughs> Victim 6, George Roston, a.k.a. Whoops. George was the leader of the Order's Holy Mother sect. Jimmy Stone's right-hand man, he took it upon himself to instruct Walter and to set him on the path of the 21 sacraments. Apparently, this was a bad idea as George took a lead pipe to the head. George's ghost does not appear in the game. <coughs> Victims 7 and 8. Billy and Miriam Locaine, a.k.a. Obligatory Creepy Horror Twins. Billy and Miriam Locaine were twins, a brother and sister. They were Walter's only child victims, and also the only victims he was known to have murdered back in Silent Hill 2, before this convoluted ritual was conceptualized. The two were murdered with an axe, Billy having been killed with a single strike, and Miriam having been so badly torn up that the only thing police found at the crime scene was a lock of her hair. The twins are the only victims to have appeared as a monster rather than ghosts. A common fan theory is that they showed up as a monster because Walter felt remorse for killing two innocent kids. I can't say I buy that, considering Miriam was one of his most brutal and savage murders. One thing I'd be interested to know, though. I understand that in Europe, they have severe censoring laws to where you can't even kill something that resembles a child in a video game. Such things are just banned outright. It's why in the original Silent Hill they had to get rid of all the mumblers and replace them with claw fingers. So, anyone who's played the European version of this game, I'm curious. Did they replace all the twin victims with bottoms or something? Or are they somehow not childlike enough? Anyway, moving on. <coughs> Victim 9. William Gregory, a.k.a. Oh, that guy. William is an interesting case among Walter's victims in that he appears but does not appear. He owned a watch and clock repair shop and was stabbed to death with a screwdriver. However, before his death, 
He had a dream about four specific things. This dream appears in Building World Second Time as the Reminisces note. His ghost, however, never appears. <coughs> Victim 10. Eric Walsh, a.k.a. Hey, where'd that sword come from? Eric was the final victim of Walter's rampage through what we know as Building World. A bartender at Bar Southfield, Eric was given the day off due to all the violence that was occurring that day. Taking it as good fortune, as he was thus given his birthday off, he returned home only to find Walter there waiting to kill him. He was simply shot in the face. He may have been defeated as a ghost by Joseph during his own adventures, as he's found originally pinned with a sword of obedience. And so ends the Ten Hearts part of the ritual. Which leaves the question, did order actually matter? It seems strange that there are three victims not related to the Building World Massacre that were killed right in the middle of it. I think Walter's cheating. Anyway, at this point, Walter was apprehended by the police and taken to jail. And then... (coughs) Victim 11. Walter Sullivan a.k.a. the Ascended Extra. Once imprisoned, Walter killed himself, jabbing himself in the neck with a spoon, severing his carotid artery. His body was buried in an empty grave near the Wish House. However, after the first of the copycat murders, that is, the twelfth victim, his grave was dug up and found to be empty. Various theories fly around about what happened, the two most common being that either they didn't have the real Walter, nice convenient plot hole escape that just makes more questions, or that his own ghost claimed his body and stashed it in the secret room of room 302. Weird, but to the context of the game, it seems to be more plausible to me. It seems to make more sense given the theme of assumption as well, as he freed himself from his flesh, becoming the more powerful being encountered in the other worlds. And thus, Walter Sullivan Round 2 began. (coughs) Victim 12, Peter Walls, a.k.a. Must be on drugs. Murdered with the theme of Void, Peter was a drug addict, his poison of choice being marijuana. One day, while high, he climbed a ladder in front of his friends, trying to show off, but then he just disappeared. He was beaten to death by Walter, but the details of this aren't particularly gone into all that much. (coughs) Victim 13. Sharon Blake, a.k.a. Attack of the Mother's Day Dress Hat. Murdered with the theme of darkness, Sharon was a victim of the Silent Hill Church. Her family had been lured in by the cult, but she refused to join. Worried about her family, she went back to investigate. She'd find no answers, though I believe I read somewhere that they had been killed by the cult. Instead, she ran into Walter, who drowned her. (coughs) Victim 14. Toby Archbolt, a.k.a. Archbolt? Really? Okay, that's kind of an awesome last name, and it really doesn't go with Toby. Anyway, Toby was a priest of the Holy Mother sect. As the sect's influence weakened following the deaths of Jimmy Stone and George Roston, they looked to expand influence elsewhere. On one such trip, Toby found himself in Mexico, where Walter pushed him off of a hundred-foot cliff. His theme of murder was gloom. (coughs) Victim 15. Joseph Schreiber, a.k.a. If These Ceilings Could Talk. The only ghost to not actually attack, Joseph was killed under the theme of despair. His method of murder is listed as unknown, but from what the game shows us, it's likely he fell to the effects of a haunted apartment and the attack of victim ghost number one, namely Jimmy Stone. A journalist, Joseph would also later unwittingly fulfill a secondary role as the giver of wisdom, telling Henry things he needed to know to defeat Walter. With the disappearance of Joseph, things once more seemed to settle down for a while, and then Silent Hill 4 begins for us, as Walter Sullivan Round 3 begins. The final phase. (coughs) Victim 16, Cynthia Velasquez, a.k.a. The Grudge. During his trips to South Ashfield, Walter took notice of Cynthia, finding her attractive. However, egged on by her friends, Cynthia made a big show of making fun of him and rejecting him. Repeatedly stabbed, her theme of murder was temptation. (coughs) Victim 17, Jasper Geen, a.k.a. The Human Torch. Yeah, we knew Walter was going to get back to him eventually. After running from the murders of his two friends, Jasper thought he was safe, yet he couldn't leave it alone. Resuming his investigations into the mysteries surrounding the cult, he'd eventually find the same devil who killed his friends. Walter burned him alive, supposedly under the theme of Source, but I'm really not quite sure how that one fits. (coughs) Victim 18, Andrew DeSalvo, 
a.k.a. Sonic Spinball. Andrew is pretty much one of the few victims that truly had it coming. An abusive overseer at the water prison, he was murdered under the theme of watchfulness. A list of abuses ranging from forcing kids to drink water infested with leeches to actually killing some of the kids, he would eventually be drowned in the death chamber by Walter. <coughs> Victim 19, Richard Braintree, a.k.a. Jack Nicholson Dubstep Remix. Richard basically was just a guy with some anger management issues. Unfortunately, he took it out on the wrong guy. Walter was only too happy to make him part of the 21 Sacraments, electrocuting him with a homemade electric chair. His theme of murder was chaos. And so we've covered the 19 people doomed by canon. Of course, there are two final victims that he can claim if things don't go well. <coughs> Victim 20, Eileen Galvin, a.k.a. Weaponized Baggage. Henry's neighbor and an all-around nice girl, Eileen was basically the only person to show kindness to Walter, having given him a doll when she was a little girl in an attempt to comfort him. Walter's reward for this show of kindness and care? I'm gonna kill you good! Eileen is the 20th planned victim, though her murder is interrupted by young Walter, seemingly what last scrap of goodness remains in him, because, you know, you're always gonna get that kind of thing with a serial killer. Yeah. The original murder attempt was a simple beating, but Eileen's eventual possible fate is being sliced up by the death machine. Her theme of murder is mother. <coughs> Victim 21, Henry Townsend, a.k.a. Blandy McBrickwall. Our protagonist, and yet not the main character of the game, Henry pretty much just picked the wrong apartment. Completely bland, uninteresting, and boring, Henry unwittingly becomes the final sacrament, the receiver of wisdom. The way he's murdered... Uh... Who knows, really? Going through the other worlds, it could pretty much be anything. However, the one ending that actually does involve him dying... It's pretty underwhelming when it happens. We'll see it later. And so that ends our examination of Walter's victims. I do wonder why they picked some minor victims and not others to show us as victim ghosts. But anyway, with this examination done, I still have some things about this game to discuss, but we'll cover that next time. So, as ever, thank you very much for watching, I hope you're enjoying the series so far, and I shall see you again next time. Until then, fare thee well.